Wait a minute. Have you heard the whistler? Money is not enough. We want you, John. We want you. That was his wife, Martha. The former widow, Martha. <laughs> yes, mother. Yes. And her simple-minded son, Henry. Go ahead, son. Go ahead. We must have John Henry. Yes, mother. Yes, mother. Yes, mother. <laughs> Tonight, CBS presents a new mystery series, The Whistler. And I, the Whistler, know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, many secrets hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And so I tell you tonight, the strange story of retribution. Gaze up this muddy, rain-splattered road. A small, lonely stone building appears against the lightning-streaked sky. The dismal courthouse for Southern Village. The village of Marsdenburg. It's nearly midnight. The trial is in progress. A murder trial. John Hendrick is on trial for his life. <laughs> the state versus Hendrick. Killed his wife and stepson. He killed his wife and her simple-minded son, Henry, for the 10000 in cash she kept in her big house on the outskirts of town. Open the door. <laughs> John Hendricks, a huge, silent man of fiction, large, bony hands. Close the door. Well, what do you think? Does he look like a murderer? The prosecutor is closing his argument. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury, it has been proven that Mrs. Hendricks had no current bank account. It has been proven that she did have a large sum of money which she kept on her estate. John Hendricks knew of this money and attempted to steal it, was caught in the act and killed them both in order to cover up the theft. It was not a tramp who killed that old gray-haired lady and her simple son. There was only one intruder, one thief, one murderer. And there he sits, ladies and gentlemen. There he sits in all his guilt, a vicious killer, a murderer. There is only one decision for you to make. There is only one penalty that can erase from this countryside the stigma of this fiendish crime. One penalty for this axe murderer, John Hendricks. And that penalty is death. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? Have you reached a verdict? Uh, Your Honor, we, uh, we the jury, due to lack of more complete evidence, find the defendant guilty of murder in the second degree. <laughs> Second degree. Cheated death. You get life. Strive. Of course you are. But it had to be. <laughs> yes, it had to be. I know. John Hendricks, stand up. Yes, John, stand up. Face the court. Watch him now. He's on the speech. John Hendricks, I wish to state that I am not in accord with the findings of this jury... However, there's nothing for me to do but sentence you to the state penitentiary for the remainder of your natural life. Know where you are now? Recognize that huge, sprawling stone structure with the high walls around it? State penitentiary. How much later? Ten years. John.
John Hendricks is in there. He has a number now. It is 10.13. Let's go through the gates. <laughs> Up the steps. Down the corridor. Here we are in cell block two. Night again. Just turn me in. This has been going on for ten years for John Hendricks, 1013, and his cellmate Bill, 1014. Bill, 1014, is a gangster, or rather he was. But he's changed during five years he's been here. Bill has decided to go straight if he ever gets out, which is very doubtful. But he holds no resentment, has become more or less happy. Bill started reading here, philosophy and so forth. He's changed. But what about John Hendricks? Oh, no. Not Hendricks. Because he has a plan. He has a purpose. Move closer to the cell door and listen. All I've got to say, Bill, is I think you're crazy enough to make the try with me. That's a matter of opinion, John. But it'll be simple. I've got everything all set. It's all fixed. Not a chance of a slip up. All fixed? Who will? Well, a friend of mine. Oh, I see. Crooked guard. No, he ain't a guard. And tell me, got it fixed with the warden. What difference does it make who it is so long as the whole thing is set and fixed? Well, you've got to have some help, inside or out. Oh, Hendricks, I think you're nuts. You're stir crazy. I'm getting out of this place. I got a reason, a good reason. I got something waiting for me outside, something I can enjoy, something that belongs to me. I'm the only one that knows where it is, and I'm going out. You're in here for a good long time, brother, and if you don't want to go with me, you can stay and rot. Look, Hendricks. I still think you're nuts. All right, what of it? I got the right dope, ain't I? And it'll work. Suppose it does. Suppose you find this money hidden away on the old lady's estate. What good would it do you? You killed her and her son to get it, didn't you? That's a lie. I didn't. I didn't kill anybody. I say you did. It ain't true. Not a word of it. But I know where the money is. Okay, you can break out. You can have the money, but... Well, I've done a lot of reading and thinking since I've been here. Ah, you have done so. Maybe so. But I know this much now. If I ever do get out, I'll do things a lot different. But believe me, Hendricks, I'll tread the straight and narrow. I've done a lot of things that I'm sure sorry for now. I, I can't undo them. But I won't do them again. No, sir, I'll do things different. Not the way I did them before. Ah, you just got religion, but it won't get you out. Maybe not, but I'm resigned. I got exactly what's coming to me. And believe me, Hendricks, so will you. So will you. If you break out, they'll have you back one way or another. You watch and see. Well, I'm going. So you watch and see. Watch and see. Now, another storm. Another night. A lonely country road. A car. We're in the south. That village we passed a few miles back, that silent, sleeping village, was Marsdenburg. Yes, Marsdenburg, remember? That small, lonely stone building was the courthouse. The courthouse where John Hendricks was tried and convicted. We're on the outskirts now, on a lonely road. A young man is driving the old car, and there's a girl beside him. Motor trouble? Well, there, just ahead of light. Yes, it's a little crossroads store. Please. There's a light, but I don't see anybody. Oh, it's closed. We'd better drive on. I guess you're right. How are you doing, folks? Uh, what's your trouble? Oh, we're having motor trouble. Oh, uh, is that so? Hmm. How are you doing here, uh, driving around on a night like this? On our way west. Mister, is there an inn or something around here where we can stay for the night? An inn? Uh, yes, there's a place about uh, eight miles up the road. He'll probably put you up. Yeah, there's a sign on the left-hand side of the road. Can't miss it. This road's pretty bad when it rains. Gotta be careful or you'll find yourself walking. Thanks. We'll try. Good night. Good luck, mister. You'll need the luck. The storm is increasing now. The muddy road sparkles in the flashes of lightning. Tall, dark trees sway back and forth in the fury of the storm like moaning lost souls. 
The little car lurches and bounces in its fight to keep center of the highway. Two miles, three miles, four, maybe five, and look, there it is straight ahead. On the right side of the road, a blue light. Ah, yes, that's it. Wait, George. Did the old man say on the right side or the left side of the road? George, what's wrong? I don't know. The distributor must have gotten wet. Look, George. What? That blue light we saw, it's gone. Where is it? We must have passed it. Well, we couldn't have. I was looking right at it. It seemed as though it just disappeared in the thin air. I'd better turn in here. This motor won't last much longer. Yes, so. I can't see a thing. No, it's... Can you? It's certainly a desolate-looking place. There must be a house back in there. There it is. Look, there's a driveway. 20 feet ahead. Oh, yeah. Well, this motor's about to conk out. We'd better drive in and see what we can find. Yes. Drive in, George. You'll find something. That's right. Through the gate. Make the curve. All right. There goes your motor. A little more. Now. Oh, we just made it. Thank heaven. Yes, that's right. Always thank heaven at a time like this. All right. Get out and go up on the porch. Now, let me help you. I'm all right. What do we do with the bags? We'll leave them here in the car till we find out if there's anyone here. Come on. You see a bell? No. I can't see a thing. Gee, this place looks completely deserted. I don't think anyone lives here. I don't either. Let's go. You are listening to The Whistler. We pause momentarily for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. George, let's don't knock. I don't like this place. Let's go on. How with a dead motor? Or did we go? I'll knock. Well, all right. Ah, that's right. Knock, George. Knock. Go ahead. Louder. Again. Got to have shelter. Yes, we we can't stay in that car any longer. Can we? No. Right not. Here it comes. Now you're on your own, George. On your own. There is someone. Yes. Oh. Uh, good evening. Uh, what is it? Well, I uh, you see. Uh, our car... Uh, yes, our, our, our car stalled. And, and we can't we, go any farther, and it's such a terrible night out that we thought we could stop here for the evening. Stop here? Why, yes, we we saw your light and... Light? What light? Why, uh, why the blue neon out in front. There is no light. Well, have you a room? Yes, there is a room. Well, uh, uh, could we come in? I mean... It's awfully wet out here. You may come in if you wish. Oh, thank you. Well, this is quite a relief. Mm. We were afraid you'd closed up for the night, especially when all the lights were out. Are the lights out? Yes, you see. Huh? Of course the lights are out. Oh, I didn't know. You do take tourists. Do we? Oh, yes, that's what they told us. Who told you? Well, the man, the old man at the little store back at the crossroad. Little store? Yes, at the crossroad about five miles back. You know where the crossroad is, don't you? There is no store at the crossroad. There isn't? No. That's it. Uh, look, madam, would you mind turning on the lights? I can't see a thing. We have no lights here. No lights? Uh, give me a flashlight, gentlemen. 
She means there's no electricity. No. There is no light here. Well, throw the flash around. There, there must be a lamp. No. Don't make a light. We see well in the dark. We? Who's we? Is there someone else in the house? My son. Oh, he's going to bed? No. He is standing beside you. Beside who? You. Todd. Yes, Mother. Oh! She give me that flashlight. Oh, God, it. you got it. Oh, yeah. She was. How, how long have you been standing there, Bob? <laughs> Since you came in. That's so. Well, I didn't see you. You make a noise like a spook. Who are you? What is your name? Uh, George Kimball. This is my wife, Jo. We're on our way west. We're travelers. Travelers? So are we. What? Quiet, son. Quiet. No, let him talk. He's quiet enough. Um... How long have you folks been living here? We lived here all our lives. How about closing the door? Is the door open? Why, of course it's open. What? George! Now, take it easy, Joan. Don't get excited. Oh, look, madam, there's a candle on that table over there at the fireplace. Is there? Yes, and uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to light it. Please don't. Oh, wait a minute. If you want us to stay here, we insist that we have some light. You want us to stay here, don't you? Do we? Do we, son? <laughs> yes, mother. What are you looking at me for? Yes, mother. Without light? Yes, mother. <laughs> George, let's go. I don't want to stay here tonight. This place doesn't look good to me. There has been no good here for many years. You see what I mean, George? I don't get it. You don't seem to want us yet. Your son does. How do you make any money that way? We don't make money. You don't? You mean you haven't had any guests lately? No, not for many years. Well, you can't expect any if you act like this. But we do expect a guest, don't we, sir? <laughs> yes, Mother. Well, he certainly has a surprise coming. Yes, he has. <laughs> How many rooms have you? There are many rooms, but only one. Only one? That doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Only one for guests. You mean only one equipment? Yes. Well, then if you've got a reserve for this guest you expect, what are we going to do? There is an inn farther along the road. They have rooms. They will take care of you. It will be best for us. Our distributor got wet, so our car won't run. Where is your car? Right there at the foot of the steps. I see no car. You don't? Why, it's standing right... George! George, where is it? It's gone. Holy smoke, it is gone. But where? How? I didn't hear a sound. It must have rolled ahead. Well, throw your light around. Not a sign of it. Say, what goes on here? Son. Yes, Mother. You move the car. <laughs> yes, Mother. I understand, son. I understand. Wait a minute. Your son moved it? How could he? The motor won't even run. And even if it would, we didn't hear a sound. No sound. How did you move it? I... I don't know. Oh, that's a fun thing. Here we are in a place where they don't want us and no way of leaving. Well, you've got us on your hands now. You'll have to make the best of it. No, George, no. We'll leave. Nonsense. This is all silly. Come on, let's have some light and cut out the monkey business. Wait. Um... What have we decided? Yes, Mother. We decided yes. Very well. <laughs> if you wish. If you wish, you may stay. Stay until... Until when? All night. <laughs> yes, Mother. If you wish. Oh, that's better. That's more like it. Now I'll light this candle. There we are. George. Look. Well, I'll be... Look at the dust and the cobwebs. This place looks deserted. Like an old cellar. Well, uh, how about the room? Do we get it, or are the guests are expecting? There is another room that will do, perhaps. Well, uh, could we see it? Yes. Uh, and by the way, how much do you charge? We charge nothing. You charge nothing? Nothing. Sounds silly, but it's bright for us. We're running short anyway. Well, let's see the room. Very well. It is upstairs. Uh... After you, madam. No. You go first. Very well. Come on, Joe. Bring that other candle. Come, son. Follow me. <laughs> yes, mother. 
I never saw so much dust. Well, they must like it. You know, nice clean dust. <laughs> that room at the head of the stairs. Why? This room is well furnished. Is this the room reserved for your expected guest? No. But you said you had only one room furnished. Who sleeps here? I stay here now. I see. Well, do I? It's a nice, soft bed. It was always comfortable. We'll leave you now. Come, son. We must leave them alone now. Yes, Mother. Leave them alone. Good night. Good night. You will lock your door. Huh? Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, we'll, we'll lock it. <laughs> goodbye. Say, so, did she say good night or goodbye? I don't know. I, I thought she said... She did say goodbye. Golly, what a screwy outfit. I wish we hadn't had car trouble. That's what we get for trying to drive in the storm. How much money have we left? Not much. Just enough to get to Los Angeles the way I figure. Once I get there, I know there'll be a job for me. We'll make it. Don't worry. You'll see me in a nice job in Hollywood. I'm not worried about seeing you in Hollywood. No? No. I'm just worried about seeing you in the morning. The same night, but later. It's midnight. Another car on the same road. You know who it is. It's John Hendricks. You know where he's going. He turns in at our deserted mansion, up the driveway, and stops. He steps out. He slips up the steps, opens the door, and throws his flash about the dusty room. Cobwebs glisten in the beam. A few moments, and the light comes to rest on the fireplace. He steps quickly to the mantel, draws a small hammer and chisel from his pocket, and sets to work removing a brick. Ah, now he's finished. The brick is loose. He reaches in and withdraws a heavy yellow envelope. He starts to put it in his pocket, but suddenly freezes in his tracks. He can't move. He turns icy cold. Turn around, Hendricks. Turn around. Look. At the foot of the stairs, across the room, stands a woman holding a candle. And beside her, a grinning youth holding an axe. Turn around, Hendricks. Look at their heads, covered with blood. Turn around. John Hendricks murder. John Hendricks thief. Yes, John. Henry. Yes, John. No, no. We've come for you, John, the same way you came for us. We've been waiting for you, John. We knew you'd come back for the money. We've been waiting. We've come to take you, John. No, no. Please don't come near me. Please. You must suffer, John, as we have suffered. I've suffered. I've suffered. Not enough, John. Not enough. I didn't mean to do it. I didn't plan to kill you. I went mad. Lost my head. No, no. Don't come near me. You can have the money. You can have it. Then give it to us, John. Give us the money. You won't need it now. Come, son. We must have the money and we must take John. Come, son, come. No, no. There. There's the money on the floor. Money is not enough, John. Money is not enough. Go ahead, son. Go ahead. We must have John Hendricks, thief, murderer. Yes, mother. Yes, mother. Yes, mother. No, 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 no. I'll shoot. I'll shoot. Bullets won't stop us. Lord George, what was that? I heard a scream. Downstairs. So did I. And oh, stop. I'll open the door. It must have been downstairs. I don't see a thing. Here's your flashlight. Great Scott. Look. A man down there on the floor. Come on. Oh. He's dead. Look at the gun. It's been fired. But I don't see a mark on it. Let's get out of here. I'll say, come on. Oh, you don't. Time for yards. John! Cops! What's going on here? Hand over that gun. Thanks. What are you doing here? Well, we're... Uh, we're stopping here. That is... We're just leaving. I can see that. Know this man on the floor? Know him? Uh, the, yes, yes. Joan, yes. what's the matter with you? No, no, no. We don't... We don't... We, Take we a don't... Frank. Yes, sir? What are you two doing here? Why, we're... Oh, we're guests. 
Yes, we're both guests. Guests? Who's guests? Why, guests, lodgers, tourists, guests of the old lady. What old lady? The old lady that lives here, the old lady and her son. Huh. You'd have to cook up a better one than that. What do you mean? Drive here? Where's your car? The son took it. Son, old lady, what are you talking about? They live here. They said they own this place. We had motor trouble, and they put us up for the night. What about him, Frank? Well, he isn't dead, breathing. Looks like he had a stroke or something. Tim, all right. John Hendricks. Take a look around. See if there's anyone else here. Yes, sir. What's your name? Uh, George Kimball. Uh, this is my wife. We're on our way to California. Do you know who this man is? Certainly. We've been on his trail. He's an escaped convict. Is this your gun? No, sir. Did he shoot at you? No, sir. You shoot at him? This gun's been fired, and we heard shots as we turned in the driveway. Not a sign of anyone, sir. Nothing but dust and cobwebs. Look, Kimball. You said there was an old lady and her son here. Sure, they were here all evening. They're not here now. Well, they let us in and showed us to our room. They certainly were here. Uh, what did the old lady look like? Well, she had gray hair, wore a house dress and an apron. What did the boy look like? He was a big kid, about 20. Had a round, rosy face, and I think... Well, in fact, I know he was kind of simple-minded, he had a strange laugh, and he he had red hair. Well, I'll be darned. What do you think of that, Frank? Golly, isn't it the creeps? Why so? Do you know who you've just described? No. The old lady and her son who used to live here. Used to live here? Yeah. They were murdered here ten years ago. What? Murder? Sure. This man on the floor was her husband. The boy's stepfather. He was tried for killing them with an axe and stealing her money and bonds. He got off at second degree because of lack of evidence. He escaped a week ago and headed this way. He's been on his trail ever since he entered this county. So you see, Kimball, if there was anybody else here tonight, it must have been a figment of your imagination. This house has been deserted for ten years. Oh, Oh, George. Good Lord. Look, Sergeant. Found this envelope on the back doorstep. It's the money. Well, what do you know? The money and the bonds. Old Martha Hendricks' money. That's why Hendricks came here. But but, but where did they go? The old lady? No place. Because they weren't here, Kimball. Well, better we get them out of here and back to headquarters. Oh, wait a minute. Don't leave us. We won't. You're coming along, too. Why? We need you for a day or two. All right, let's get going, Frank. Come on. But, but where, where did they go? We saw them. I know they were here. Well, you certainly described them to a T, but don't worry too much about it, you know. Things like this can drive you nuts. You know what I mean? Things like this, well, things like this sometimes just, just happen. You know what I mean? No. Well... Oh, come on, let's go before I get the heebie-jeebies. What did he say? Things like this just sometimes happen? Just happen? Well, sometimes they do and can't be explained. <laughs> but not this time. Oh, no, not this time. This can be explained. Remember John Hendricks' cellmate, Bill? Bill, number 1014? He can explain. He knows all about it. Because he planned it. Bill wanted the money. He'd learned all the dope from Hendricks. He sent his pals, the phony spooks, made up like the old lady and her son, to grab the money when Hendricks recovered it. Too bad they dropped it in their hurry to get away. Bill didn't want to hurt John. He wanted to scare him out of it. Remember? Bill, 1014, had changed. He said he'd never do things the way he'd done them before. And he didn't. Bill meant what he said. <laughs> Good night. This came upon you unaware, and you listened. We've served our purpose.
Whistler with original music composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch is written and directed by J. Donald Wilson and originates from Columbia Square in Hollywood. Next week, same time, The Whistler returns. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.